This review will go over genetic control or how the cells control what genes are expressed when. I'm going to begin uh, talking about genetic control in bacteria and that will mainly be uh, the operon model. I'll spend most of the time talking about that and then I will spend a little bit of time talking about genetic control in eukaryotes. Though, as I mentioned in class, this is very complex, so we are not going to get into a whole lot of details about that. So, first to the operons. Okay, general structure of the operon. This is all in on the DNA molecule. And remember that bacteria just have a single circular molecule of DNA. Uh, so the first gene here uh, with the R, that codes for the repressor protein, and that is a very important part of the operon. We'll talk about that uh, coming up. Uh, the P right here is the promoter. Remember that is where RNA polymerase will bind and begin transcribing the genes in that direction. Um, and then the final piece here is the O. This is called the operator. And this is a place where this repressor protein can come in and bind. And then immediately following that uh, are the series of genes. In the case of the LAC operon here, there are three genes here. They're just called gene 1, 2, and 3. Uh, which code for the proteins in the metabolic pathway that is regulated uh, by this operon. The exact name of the genes is not overly important uh, for you to know, but the overall structure of the operon. Uh, all operons have the same basic parts. Uh, uh, they code for the repressor protein, the promoter is right after that, and then this operator region followed by the genes. So how does the lactose operon work? Okay, so remember that the lac operon is what we call an inducible operon, which means that it is able to be turned on in certain conditions. And the reason the bacteria want to do this is they don't want to waste energy expressing genes when there's no reason to have those genes expressed. So let's look at the case here uh, where lactose is absent first. So the genes that are expressed by the operon, gene 1, 2, and 3, are involved in the metabolism of lactose, the going, uh, getting lactose broken down so that it can enter into glycolysis and uh, cellular respiration. So if there's no lactose around, there's no reason for the bacteria to express these genes to break down the lactose because it's not, not there. So the repressor protein here exists in this free state. And this is what, uh, this would also be considered the active state of the repressor protein. And the reason it's considered active is because it can bind here to the operator region, which you can't really see, but that is the operator region. And when RNA polymerase tries to begin transcription, it bumps into the repressor protein and stops. Okay, so you can see the big X there, sort of. Uh, there is no transcription, so the genes are not expressed, and there is no protein made. Okay, no protein. Which makes sense, because there is no lactose. Now, contrast that with what happens down here when lactose is present. So now the bacteria are in some environment where there's lots of lactose around. For example, they are in a sample of milk. You can see the lactose molecules here have bound to the repressor protein, and that shifts the repressor proteins into this inactive state. And by inactive, that means that they are now coming off the operator region and are free to just kind of float around inside the bacteria. Since there is nothing on the uh, operator region now, 
when RNA polymerase binds and wants to transcribe, it can move right through. So all three genes are transcribed, and here you can see the proteins being made. So these proteins, these three proteins here, are involved in breaking down lactose. So the cell can now use this lactose as a food source. So when lactose is absent, the expression is off. And when lactose is present, the expression is on. Okay, so that's a very simple review of bacterial control and operons. So let's real quick look at eukaryotes. As I said earlier, the eukaryotic control system is very complex. Uh, there's lots of different places for prokaryotes, or sorry, eukaryotes, to control the gene expression. Uh, the main point, the main place where they control this is right here, the frequency of transcription, uh, the first step. So if the cell does not need that particular protein made at, at a particular time, uh, the gene just won't be transcribed. Once the gene is transcribed, there are all these other levels, uh, different mRNAs from a single gene, different RNA splicing patterns, uh, the translation can be controlled by different uh, rate, by the mRNA hanging around in the cell for different amounts of time. Uh, proteins can be modified. Proteins can be degraded so they don't hang around for a long time. But all that being said, the main point is right here at the level of transcription and the transcription factors which bind to the DNA at the promoter region and help RNA polymerase kind of get started. Uh, that's really what you need to know at this point about eukaryotic gene control. Really just focus on the operon model and the lack operon in specific.